Hi guys, welcome to another video. In this one, I'm going to be showing you a time lapse of a recent painting I did of a tawny owl. I'm working on quite a few different projects at the moment, so I've not had a chance to put together a really in-depth video, but I just wanted to put this one out there to keep things rolling, to share with you guys some stuff that's been going on. You can see a much longer format version of this particular painting over on my Patreon channel, links in the description, along with all the other places that you can find me. And don't forget, coming up soon, I do have some free Zoom demos where you can join me just by signing up with your email. This is to introduce an upcoming series of courses called the Masterclass Series. And this is a series designed exclusively to help you guys improve your painting as quickly as possible, kind of cutting out all of the fuss, all of the nonsense and cutting down to the, the absolutely crucial things uh, and principles that are really going to jump your watercolour forward. You can join me for just one, two, three or all four of those courses. I'm really excited about it. They start in May 2022. Check out the links in the description. I think that's it guys. Have a little look at this painting and I will catch you in the outro. Okay guys, so I'm working on about a half sheet watercolour paper here. It's 100% cotton, Baohong watercolour paper. I'll put all of my materials in the description for those that are interested. As I said, you can hop over to Patreon and watch a longer version of this. I'm starting with a big mop brush, a size 18, a Skoda Ultimo. It's faux squirrel, so it holds loads of water and pigment. Beautiful place to start. Going really light to kick off. I'm actually using a yellow ochre to start with. The other colour that I'll be using a lot of is Quinacridone Deep Gold. And this is almost identical to um, Burnt Sienna. It's got a little bit more vibrancy to it. But I love it. So I'm starting with a very watery paint consistency, kind of using that lightness of pigment to map out the, the painting, getting a feel for where the lights and the shadows are going to go, where I want the more intense colour, where I want the slightly softer colour, where do I want the white of the page to, to really break an area up. Now as this begins to dry, now I go into the yellow ochre. Once it's dried off a little bit, we're at that kind of slightly damper stage, not sopping wet. And I'm going in with about single cream paint consistency of the deep quinacridone gold, the burnt sienna equivalent. Sticking with the big brush because it's going to help me make nice big bold brush strokes. And I'm trying at this particular one not to get stuck in any one area for too long. I'm keeping my colour mixing simple, keeping my paint consistency very, very simple and keeping my brush strokes very, very simple. Really considering every brush stroke that I make, I'm kind of working with a little bit of a sense of urgency and focus because I'm working kind of slightly wetter into wetter, but at the same time it's kind of considered uh, and there is some thought and care given to it. I don't really put a brush stroke down unless I'm fairly certain that I'm at least trying to achieve something with it, if that makes sense. So. I'm not kind of poking away at an area pointlessly. I'm not kind of just painting an area for the sake of it. I'm being quite deliberate on what I'm trying to achieve. Although I don't know exactly how I'm going to go about something. I am thinking like, well, I want a little bit more blue tone uh, at the back here just to use that negative shape of the background to bring out a little bit more of the positive shape of the bird. I'm actually using a colour called Lavender here by Holbein. It's a really beautiful colour. It's generally an opaque colour, obviously tr um, watered down. The wash will have some transparency, but the, the pigment itself is opaque. Uh, and you'll see me use it a little bit later on in a more opaque way. And notice I'm not in any rush to really bring this to a finish. As it continues to dry, I bring up the paint consistency. And this is a process that I use a lot as the pigment and the water gets drier on the page. I get progressively thicker with the pigment that I'm using in the brush and we will get increasingly sharper marks but as long as there's a bit of moisture in the br brush, bit of moisture on the page, we all get those lovely kind of soft fuzzy marks in places and anytime I'm painting a mark over the top of the dry wash or the dry white of the page, I'm obviously going to get a sharper mark as I work into the areas that still have some dampness, those marks will retain a little bit more softness. As I go kind of stronger in paint consistency, that's also bringing the tone of the colour darker because we're using less water. So I'm slowly bringing in slightly sharper marks, slightly darker, darker pigment uh, and stronger paint consistency. And so it's almost like I'm slowly pulling the bird out of this slightly more abstract feeling. So now I'm, I'm kind of pushing towards some really deep darks in places. I want to start really emphasising the fact that there is a large area of shadow 
on the right hand side of the bird as we look at it and it's that large area of shadow that's going to really hold the painting together so I've dropped down now to um, I did quite a while ago but I'm just commenting now because I'm looking at it it's um, a smaller brush it's still a mop brush this particular one it's a size zero Jackson's Raven uh, it's a squirrel faux squirrel brush and it holds a lot of water and pigment but it's that smaller scale and it allows me to do these smaller brush strokes work on these smaller areas but there's still a lot of water and pigment in the brush nice bold expressive brush strokes if I can get them and what I'm doing here is kind of blurring my eyes and looking at the subject and trying to work out where these little pockets of slightly deeper shadow are so I've laid in all of the light tones first or the light family so that includes the whites of the page and lots of lovely fairly light what we might call half tones I then began to push the painting more towards the kind of medium or the sort of gentle shadows these are more shadowy areas but they are not well, they have reflected light in them they're not really really deep rich darks what I'm doing now is kind of moving around the painting starting to sharpen little bits up starting to put in little bits of detail here and there which we might call smaller shapes so we work from big shapes to smaller shapes and I'm also slowly bringing in the deeper shadows so n not only um, does that really help me think about the subject in terms of either being a light area a medium or gentle shadow and then eventually a deeper shadow it's a really great way to work with watercolor it's a really great process because generally with watercolor we're starting with the lighter tones and building the shadows on top so thinking about lots of free flowing lovely lights where everything kind of washes together as long as there's plenty of water we're going to stay in the light family and then whilst that's still wet or when it's completely dry I can begin to think about the next drop down which is the medium shadow and then I can begin to, as that dries, start to place in the thicker pigment and start to push towards the deeper shadow and eventually the really deep rich dark. So I find this a really nice way to think about the subject. And when I'm teaching people when they're first starting out and they need maybe a little bit more structure to their paintings, they don't have the experience or the knowledge or the techniques to kind of um, jump around so much, following this, this very straightforward process of lights first, gentle shadow not slightly darker moving towards deeper shadow it's also a great way to think about things because um, you can apply it to any given area and it's not to say that the gentle shadow and the deep shadow has to be exactly the same tone in every single area that's the beauty of it you can think of this um, this process and just apply it to any given area in a way that is relevant to the area and you can just think am I painting light Am I painting gentle shadow or am I painting deep shadow? And just apply that to any given area of the painting. It makes the whole process much, much simpler. So now we are pushing towards the finish. We've got a feeling of the shadow side on the right hand as we look at it. I've managed to keep all of the left side light apart from it being punctuated by little areas of gentle shadow. We're now working on much smaller shapes with generally darker pigment and using a dry brush in places just to sharpen things up. Some people like to do the eyes first. I tend to think of them as the reward at the end. So I've, I've got something that sort of resembles an owl, which is great. Uh, now I can come into the eye and if I can get these eyes working, particularly this one on the left hand side as we look at it, this is going to make sense of the painting. So it doesn't mean we suddenly have to go really complex just because we're painting an eye. I do this incredibly simply a simple but accurate shape that is predominantly a deep dark mixed using a Prussian blue and a quinacridone red which is one of the other colours I've had out that will give me a lovely rich dark I leave a couple of little bits of the whites of the page just to give us that feeling of maybe a little highlight or something like that and then I use a damp brush to go in and just soften a couple of edges so it's not all hard edges perfectly happy with that it's a very very simple way to paint an eye but in the context of this sort of painting it works well and this area gave me a lot of trouble if I'm totally honest I went too dark too soon with this area and it caused me some problems I had to lift some of it out and it's meant that I've had to do a very very gentle glaze of shadow back over the top to allow me to then work into it and get the effect that I want I want this area to have a feeling of softness to it Notice where the light is hitting, the left hand side of the bird as we look at it. Generally everything is quite sharp edged and quite defined. 
Notice then as we drift around the form of the bird into the shadow side, everything takes on a slightly softer, more fuzzy feel. So I'm aiming for slightly harder, sharper, defined light areas, slightly softer, more out of focus shadow areas, just emulating what light does in nature. Very, very close to a finish here. A few little marks in the face of the opaque blue, just to lift it, just to get that echo of colour. And the very, very final touch, which for me really makes it pop, that little shot of an opaque blue dropped into that eye, just enough information to define that eye, show us where the edge of it is and make sense of that kind of shadowy face. The only other thing I wanted to touch on very briefly, I've spoken about this in a few other videos, is the way that our object, in this case a bird, is interacting with our background in terms of edges. For me this is a good example of the four different types of edges. As I said, I've got this in another video, you should be able to see it on the screen, linked in the description. But I talk about the four different types of edges uh, in, in the way that our object is, is interacting with our background. So the obvious one is light against shadow. So the lighter edge of the bird against a slightly darker background. I've got that in a few places. I've also then got the dark edge of the bird against the lighter background in a few places. These are generally the easier edges to get. We've also got plenty of shadow against shadow. So the whole of the chest and the side of the head is generally in shadow against a shadowy background. And in places we have optical blending, which is when two tones very similar butt up next to each other and they have the illusion of a soft edge because they are optically very similar. But because of the nature of watercolour in this particular painting, we also have lots of physically the paint softening together, lots of wet into wet work where the bird kind of wet into wet merges into the background. So we kind of have shadow against shadow, dark against dark, lost edges, whatever you want to call it. The first two I mentioned were hard edges. This is a kind of a lost and a soft edge. Then the other one I've spoken about before, which I think is like a bonus edge, is a light object or light edge of a bird, in this case, against a light background. So you can see in a couple of places on the head, we can't quite tell where the light of the background becomes the light of the face. And we've got this lovely light lost edge on the shoulder of the bird against the white of the page behind it. So again, this is like a lost or a soft edge. It doesn't always have to be the white of the page, it's just tones that we are calling light butting up next to each other. Ideally, we don't even have any definition there, but there's just enough information in some of the other edges for the mind of the viewer to fill in those gaps, which for me makes a more interesting painting, and it makes it more engaging for the viewer too. That's it guys, I hope you enjoyed it. As I said at the beginning, all the places you can find me online are linked in the description. Loads of other stuff going on. I also have an online watercolour school which will be launching very, very soon. Very excited about that too. Link in the description to pre-register your interest. I think that's it guys. Subscriptions, likes, comments, all the usual stuff and I will see you in a video very, very soon.